big puppy trades. Oh, before I make it big, look at that timestamp. 10-4, baby, 10-4. I got your message, pups. Oh, baby. You guys know how to get charts out of me. Woo! Oh, baby. 200-something, 250 views on a Tuesday? Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm just, oh man, we can do that all day. We can do that all day. Before I get into the stock market, let me tell you something about, a little bit about economics. Incentives. It's all about incentives. When someone is doing something that you like, baby, reward them. Reward them. And if someone is doing something that you don't like, do not reward them. Okay, otherwise they're going to keep doing what you don't like. All right, so you guys like videos like this, reward me. Let me know. Give me some subscribers. Give me some likes, you know. And I like, for example, the viewership on my most recent Tuesday video. That was phenomenal. So I'm going to reward you guys. Let's see if we can run that back. Back, back, back. Oh, man, that's going to be the first stock we talk about. Bit Digital, Clean Spark, Bit Deer. First half of the big of the video is a Bitcoin video. Uh, Rivian, Peloton, Big Bear AI, Target, and Geo Group. Whoa! Oh man, where are some of these stocks coming from? The unusual stock options volume screen. We're gonna see Big Bear AI. We're gonna see Peloton. We're gonna see Target. No surprise. Uh, given the big moves they have, Peloton earnings tomorrow morning. The MMs are very clearly gambling and picking a side on Peloton earnings. We're going to talk about that. Oh, we're going to talk about that. But I like this. Oh, man. I love, I love those results yesterday for a Tuesday. We can make this a daily thing if we're getting that. If we're getting that, this can be... All day, every day. Some of these stocks are going to come from... They don't come from this screen. Geo Group comes from this screen. And Matt's Group. I want to talk about Matt's Group, too. A little interesting. So we got a fun video. Uh, lots of fun. Let's get into some crypto bipto for a little bit. Uh, that's Big Bear AI. Uh, we're going to start with BACT, then we'll get into some of these other stocks. Uh, outside of the cryptocurrency world. Wow, look at back. We'll zoom in on this daily a little bit. One, two, wave three, wave four, and wave five. Now, we don't get momentum divergence here, but we do have a very clean five-wave subdivision. What I mean by that, you can just kind of see the 535 five sequence, we also see wave 5, roughly, uh, not perfect, the length of wave 1, place at the wave 4 low. Is it the length of wave 3, place at the wave 4 low? It's not going to be quite that high, is it? Oh, it's around that. So we got that 535 five sequence, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 waves up, very cleanly subdivided. Wave 5 is just about the length of wave 3. We have an A, B, C correction at the 61.8%. Uh, re uh, retracement. I'm long backed. I'm also long bit digital, and I, I have more cryptocurrency holdings than that. But regarding these, most important cryptocurrency holdings I have are related to uh, Coinbase, C O N Y, MicroStrategy, M S T Y, uh, Bitcoin futures, B I T O, paying a, a nice dividend. The whole point of saying all that is that. Um, if these stocks do stay sideways or they do, you know, heaven forbid, go down, uh, then I've got a lot of covered call premium coming in. I'm going to collect all that massive volatility uh, that the gamblers uh, are betting on. And we're also just going to show right here that we have this 100% uh, extension hit. So I think that, that, that the perfect stop is going to be 1173 Bact has a super high beta, if I, and I'm going to keep holding it. 
Because I, I think this is 5-3, five, 5-3, three, five, three, five. We'll get into uh, the targets in a second. If I wanted to get a slightly uh, better downside level, and we hadn't had this big move today, you know, we were still a little lower, a little closer to it. It could look something like this. 14.80 was the low. 24.74 was the high. And this high was 23.59. So 10.95, you know, if we were a little lower, maybe we got a little bit of a pullback, 10.95 uh, would be a great, a great downside level two the 127.2% extension, but we ended this ABC correction between the 100 and the 127.2% uh, uh, extension of the length of wave A places the wave B high, which was also happened to be right where the 61.8% uh, retracement was. Let's look at some upside targets. One way, uh, the 100% extension of the length of wave one place at the wave too low, but right now we can see just very beautifully. Look at how that 127.2% extension perfectly lines up with the 61.8% uh, extension of the length of wave one slash wave A. So let's just go through that again. The 127.2% extension of the length of wave one placed at the wave too low is around 36. That happens to line up perfectly with just the 161.8% extension, what someone called a negative 61.8% retracement extension to be a little more exact. It's that negative 61.8 uh, in the retracement box. And it lines up perfectly with a 127.2% extension. That's a lot of words to say 36 is the uh, ideal target for backed. And I think that that's plenty for now. I mean, that's just very easy for it to roll off the tongue. The backed is going to 36 if it holds above 11.72. Uh, uh, but that is my analysis, and I'm long uh, back. So I'm at liberty to say that. That's why, I'm at, that's why I'm long a stock like this. And what happens when we get there? Of course, I don't think this is wave 3, wave C. I think that this is going to be a shallow wave 4 and a wave 5 higher. A little explosive and now we're starting to see a kind of a scary thing where Bitcoin has joined China it's joined biotech it's joined some <coughs> lockdown stocks uh, with being election stocks um, and setting up interestingly you know I'll just say if Trump comes out and says he supports the pot stocks that's really the only way that I could see See that we'll see because the pot stocks are really the only thing that are super pro Harris even though of course she's a lot more people up for pot than anyone anyway 11.72 uh, great stop if we got a little lower 10.95 uh, not too far away uh, and then I think we can go all the way up to the mid 30s for wave three before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher if wave four retest the wave one high wave five is the length of wave one place the wave four low and, you know, Mars is in conjunction with Uranus at the end of Taurus. We could see uh, wave five go all the way up to 43. That last part, obviously, was a joke. Uh, let's look at Bit Digital. I'm long Bit Digital. And I'm long Leap Options on Bit Digital, actually. Uh, 5.27. Looking nice. One, two, wave three, four, five. Look at this wave three. Perfect high is high. Wave four, retest the wave one high. Wave five ends with momentum divergence. The 61.8% uh, retracement is met for wave two with this ABC correction. And then from this low, we go wave one, wave two. I believe we're within a strong wave three before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. Let's see if that 61.8% retracement lines up or the 61.8% extension lines up with that 127.2% extension. And of course it does. Look at that again. Perfect, perfect. 8.20, uh, the 61.8 percent extension of wave one perfectly matches up with the 127.2 percent extension of the length of wave one placed at the wave two low. That looks like 
the upper sevens, the lower eight is that perfect wave three target for a shallow wave four and a wave five higher. If wave four retests the wave one high and wave five is then if wave five is the length of wave one place of the wave four low, we can see uh, bit digital BTBT go all the way up to 10 uh, for this one, two, three, four, five wave sequence. Uh, yes, I'll get a little crazy here and say when that happens, I think bit digital is going to end a large wave one in red and have a wave two correction before wave three higher. So that's enough for now for bit digital. They're all kind of lining up. They're singing the same song. Are they going to be in harmony? Institutions have been buying lots of straddles and strangles on clean spark uh, energy. This was a big leader of the Bitcoin mining sector. And we're seeing this firm up. I'll show you guys one way to get these downside levels, but like, sorry, like, uh, they're all, they all, they all got bit in their name. I'm forgetting which bit, uh, I'm talking about like the first bit we talked about, uh, which is bat. Um, we see that the, this low right here is probably going to be the best level just from a risk reward standpoint. 9.34 is going to be that, uh, that stop level. And then we look at this, wave one, wave two. Within wave three, we make the highest high on the RSI. We have a wave four and then a wave five that ends with momentum divergence. And we can also clearly see that this large wave three is subdivided into one, two, three, four, five waves. And then this beautiful ABC correction. Uh, that's just one of those corrections that makes me really wonder when people say, they, they don't think wave theory is real or has any uh, purpose in, in technical analysis. Uh, when I don't know how they're constantly looking at ABC corrections. That clean, that dramatic. It's the same thing every time. And they're still like, ah, uh, that's, you know, a war shock test. Anyway, we'll look at this. They're buying strangles on this right now. They're getting ready for uh, this to go a million miles per hour. 24.72 is this high. Bang. 13.70 and 21.39. So that's where we get this 100% extension uh, being hit for this ABC correction. Doesn't matter how many times uh, that happens, people are going to be like, wait a minute, are we sure wave theory is real? Uh, and then if we want to be a little more precise, we can line this up with the retracement of all of wave one. I'm going to guess, I promise my eyes are closed. We're right at the 61.8% retracement. Oh, oh, I swear my eyes were closed. I swear my eyes were closed. Look at that. Oh, come on now. Come on now. That 61.8% retracement, what uh, some brainiacs would call Fibonacci confluence, what I'm going to call that uh, really pretty clean spark energy. Come on, baby, light my fire. I see why they're buying strangles on you, and I don't blame them. The length of wave one places the wave two low. Clean spark, going to... Uh, erupt in flames. 32 is the equal legs target. The equal legs target. Oh my. 9.34 is the stop on a stock at 12.41. And the equal legs target uh, that I'm giving is 32. Okay, so that's how my hits are kind of different. When, when, if and when, I'm sorry, if Clean Spark goes up to 32, this isn't just a, a hit. This is kind of like a ridiculous risk reward setup that I'm kind of perfectly picking. That's kind of what, what's really happening. It's a little more than the standard hit uh, that a lot of people are just going to put those bull and bear tags on and, you know, try to remind people of for the rest of their lives. Bit Deer. Oh, Bit Deer. Leave the world behind. Bit Deer Technology Group is going to leave the bears behind. It's a technology company for the cryptocurrency mining community. So it's selling pickaxes to the pickaxe salesmen in this Bitcoin gold rush based in Singapore, uh, very interesting, negative 56 uh, million annual income, but 368 million annual sales, uh, pretty, you know, for this sector, we see a lot worse 
than that. All these, you know, profitability margins are going to be uh, negative for most of these Bitcoin mining stocks. And that's why kind of their idea is just to, I guess, Michael, they have that Michael Saylor strategy sometimes where they just own the Bitcoin. And then when Bitcoin goes up, it doesn't really matter how much debt they're in because they can refinance with the Bitcoin they own. At least that's what Michael Saylor seems to think uh, his strategy is. And, and the market keeps agreeing with them. So uh, hard to argue. Let's look at this right now. I think the best way to play Bitcoin, honestly, getting the upside exposure, you know, understanding the permeable thesis, but not mortgaging the house for it and collecting all that ball to ball to option premium uh, from Bitcoin during these bull rallies, putting it into uh, the real assets that aren't digital, uh, that pay dividends. And uh, I'm not actually considering start, starting an entire company. Uh, that does that one two just look at this rsi so pretty oh wow oh wow one more time one more time one two wave three highest high in the rsi shallow wave four wave five all right come on now come on now wave one wave a that's five waves up so what's this a b c three waves back can we make this a little prettier yeah, that's definitely the ABC. I was going to say it could be. Could be. Hey, doesn't really matter. I wouldn't disagree with that. I wouldn't disagree with that. One way to, if that, that's what really matters to someone, you know, perfectly labeling that ABC, the way to do it is to get the extensions out. We shouldn't go past the 161.8% fib, if my labeling is correct, although... For super volatile growth, uh, like Bitcoin, it can dance in that 161.8% extension. Uh, the invalidation is very clear. 5.23 for di bit dear. Very pretty. Lovely. So that's the invalidation. The length of wave one, and that's that's the invalidation invalidation. If we go below that, uh, there's, there's no re revision. That wasn't five waves up. And three waves back, this wasn't wave one, wave A from this low. So that means that, you know, the, the count's invalid. So it's a little more important and meaningful than a stop loss. 13.71 is the minimum target. Holy cow, that's the minimum target. I mean, we look at this longer chart, it's a little... The longer chart's very interesting. This really is sending... Leave the, leave the, the bit deer bears behind. I think these deers are about to start acting crazy. Yeah, this is just going to be the subdivision of wave one, wave two, and then one, two, three, four, five, another wave one, ABC, another wave two, wave three of wave three. I think this, this, Honestly, not too outlandish target is going to go off the charts. Barely. Almost there. Let's see. Once again, no, I don't think that 61.8% retracement, that 61.8% extension of wave one is going to line up. I think it's going to go perfectly off the chart. And then that's where a little box would be. Yeah, we're going off. See that line up there? We're going off the chart there. That 127.2% extension is nice. 12.85. Five point two three, and this low is six point oh eight. Lovely, lovely, lovely. And then, of course, fifteen point seven seven. That's kind of the perfect wave three target. The you know someone's a greedy bastard. Is, is that target is 13.70. No profits are taken past that point. That's a little greedy uh, for a plus 100% return, but 15.77 looks good. So what if I am in one of these positions they start you know, running off and I'm up 100%, you know, just generally, if I'm up 100%, I'm up you know, 150% selling, say, 50% of the position, 60% of the position, I'm gonna keep that original exposure and then um, I'm still going to have uh, removed all the original risk from the trade. So that, that's how you know I like to take profits on commons, uh, on options on the way up. If I've got a big winner, we're up 
I'm going to be uh, taking partial profits along the way. There's no time where I get to 13.15 and it hasn't hit 13.70 yet. So I'm still holding every single share. I haven't sold any, even though I'm up 100%. And uh, then, you know, I'm well, it has to hit that 100% extension. Anyway, uh, just, just a reminder, there's more important things to uh, trading than Elliott Wave. There's a lot more important things than that. If I had to quantify, I'd say Elliott Wave is about 15% to 20% of what really matters in uh, my, uh, my finances. Elliott Wave honestly probably isn't even more important than um, a lot of regular personal finance stuff that people don't even consider finance, where people live and uh, stuff like that. Anyway, this is a very pretty chart, those five waves up. And this could be very explosive uh, for a bit dear because that wave five target realistically is going to go off the charts. If wave four retests the wave one high, wave five is the length of wave one placed at the wave four low. I mean, I know this sounds ridiculous, but bit dear could go all the way up to 20 for this red wave three target. And yeah, that's just a red wave three. There's a red wave four and a wave five after that. No reason to go full. Uh, I mean, I'm not, I don't need to tell you guys the weather in uh, early 2025. Unless you guys want to know that. Let's get away from crypto, bipto, Rivian. Rivian. Earnings out of the way. I'm not sure where I saw this. I think it was on the strangle screen. Oh my gosh. Rivian loses $5 billion a year. Oh man. Rivian loses $5 billion a year. That's called a gross stock. That's called a stock that's not going to pay a dividend. And when there's not a yield max ETF, even uh, there's not really. I mean, I know you know there's. It's possible to get the uh, covered calls in the the brokerage account. I don't do that personally. I just use these ETFs and have them sell options for me. Don't ever uh, even think about you know, exercise or assignment risk. Exercise risk. I can manage that pretty easily. Uh, let's look at this. The strangle screen. It wasn't on the strangle screen. Where did I see you? It might have been on it during the day. Rivian, where were you? Were you on low IV ranking percentile? I saw Rivian somewhere. Now we're not going to see uh, Rivian on this. We're going to see AMC Theaters and another EV stock on it, though. Let's look at Rivian, though. The Elliott Wave count. Nice and interesting from this low I'm gonna show you guys a little bit of voodoo if I take these time zones and I can these time fib zones and I connect the beginning of the small degree wave one high wave one Wave two, 9.89, 9.89. So I, it doesn't really matter which one of those are the wave two. I'll do the first one. Wave three, it's kind of that, it's the biggest wave. It's kind of pretty jarring. One way to count this uh, would be that this is wave one, this is wave two. I think that this is wave one. This is wave two. I can't really give you guys a clear way as to how I'm distinguishing. Um, I would say wave one, wave two, we retest, but then we have another wave one and wave two. I believe that this is wave one and wave two of this bigger wave three. And that because we have this big gap and a lot of this price action was happening in pre-market, it's a little difficult uh, to see that small wave four within the big wave three because wave four is a pretty shallow wave especially when it occurs during pre-market but wh what i want to show you guys is think about the time here right? we're, we're always focusing on price but watch what happens to rivian as it approaches this five time fib zone the first week of september let's focus on that let's just see what happens to rivian the first week of September. I'm going to have so much fun. Just just when I said that, I knew that I was going to be posting about how Rivian was exploding 
in the first week of September. We'll see if that actually happens. I feel like it's going to happen. Oh, man. Very pretty. Very pretty. They're going to make this a little difficult. Have you guys seen those Rivian trucks? Wow. Look at that 61.8% extension. The 61.8% retracement lining up almost perfectly with the 161.8% extension again. Again. 10.52. A little wide, but we're on the daily chart of a super, super volatile growth stock. 8.26. 18.86. Yeah, we see that 61.8% retracement. That's way too tight. I do think that I'm kind of nicking this low right here. So they can get pretty tight. I'll find the screen Rivian was on. I think I know what it was. But watch what happens to Rivian the first week of September. And that's based on this time fib. I can go right now. If it does rip, if it goes ripping, ripping crazy, the first week of September, notice that eight time fib is the first week of November. That'd be where wave three, wave C ends. I know that's a little voodoo. So yeah, let's just hammer down these levels. The invalidation is going to be the 78.6% retracement. I know that's a little wide. 10.53 invalidates. 12.18. I mean, that's just ridiculously tight for Rivian's high beta. But let's just focus on, we got this big gap within this wave three. And now the wave two, wave B is retesting this gap. I love seeing that the gap hasn't been filled. I like even, I honestly like the top of this gap. 12.04 is a super tight, dummy tight stock. I'm gonna write dummy tight, dummy tight, 12.04. But the real invalidation is gonna be 10.52, the target. For the stock, the length of wave one placed the wave too low can take uh, Rivian up into the low 20s. That shouldn't be too surprising. If that was the perfect bottom, the equal X target is 23.54 before a shallow wave four correction in a wave five higher. If wave four retests the wave one high and wave five is the length of wave one placed at the wave four low, then what we can see is when Rivian, if Rivian does go and break 18.86, bulls are gonna look for 79.74 to get broken on the daily RSI. That's gonna confirm this is a wave three, and then that's where a shallow wave four is gonna be expected before a wave five higher. So 23, a little, little early, honestly, a little early of a level um, for Rivian's wave three, just because it has this super high beta. We can, we can see it get a little a little higher than that. The 127.2% extension. Yeah, that looks good. That's a nice little zone right there. There's a target zone. 23.79 to 25.41. That looks pretty good for wave three, wave C, before a wave four and a wave five higher. Uh, I... I'm looking for this 535 five sequence to begin. Oh, this might be the thumbnail. This might be the thumbnail. That looks really pretty. What do you guys think? Good thumbnail? I think that'll be a good thumbnail. Make it picture perfect. I'm like Renoir. Some of you guys don't know this, but my best my best prediction predictions are gonna be minted as NFTs, and I'm gonna uh, give some of them away to my little empire that I'm starting 
anyway. Rivian Peloton. All right, this one is very clear to see uh, what screen it was on. It was on the unusual stock options volume screen. And we can go uh, see what options they were buying. Peloton loses $1.2 billion a year on $2.8 billion annual sales, negative earnings per share. So it looks like there's going to be a little bit of a catalyst that this is going to start. They're gambling like crazy on these, uh, these earnings that are tomorrow morning. I don't like to buy a stock right before the earnings the next morning if I can help it. So if there is a dud move after earnings, it's, it's a nothing burger, then that's going to be a little interesting uh, for Peloton. Let's make sure we know what they were doing. They had they had 542% unusual options volume with an 84% call bias. That is very statistically significant. I've been looking at the screen basically every day, and I haven't seen Peloton on it. And we can see they really are just gambling on uh, earning, gambling on earnings, quote unquote. We can see that most of the contracts were for these uh, first two weeks, and so, and then we just completely drop off after that. I'll be honest, I was thinking about leap shopping. So, if we take uh, 86 and we times it by 3.36, uh, we get 290. Okay, the reason that I just gave you guys that random math problem is because that's taking the delta of this option, uh, the two-strike call, for uh, J January of 2026. So we're talking about basically 18 months away, a year and a half away, and the option is $1.36 in the money. That means that 36 minus 100 is 54. Yeah, it's... 64. Yeah, 36 minus 100 is 64. So that means only uh, $64 of this option is this two strike call is intrinsic, is extrinsic value, is time value. Okay, where does that come from? 3.36 minus 2 is 1.36. That means $136 of this $200 call is intrinsic value it is, is basically not going to lose if we if what that means is if peloton stayed flat all the way till expiration and closed at 3.36 uh, this option would be worth at least 136 dollars that means only 64 dollars of this 200 dollars option is time value let's look at this another way too this has a this has a Delta of 86 and the, the underline is at 3.36. That means this option is the equivalent of owning 86 shares and Peloton doesn't pay a dividend. So what's going on here? Well, 86 times 3.36 is 290. So that means that an investor would have to spend $290 on common stock uh, of Peloton to get the exact same exposure as this options trader who is buying a leap that's deep in the money uh, that expires in uh, 18 months. But they're, they're getting the exact same exposure for $200, whereas the common stock trader is getting the exact same exposure for $290. So the options trader actually has less risk to the downside if Peloton goes curse flat. And what else is happening is the Peloton rips. The delta of this option is going to become a hundred. It's going to have the. Uh, it's going to be the equivalent of owning. A um, hundred shares of the stock, which would be three hundred and thirty-six uh, dollars, whereas we're looking at the original common stockholder is still going to have paid two hundred ninety dollars, and they're going to have much less exposure. They're going to have fourteen shares less exposure because they only buy eighty-six shares because the delta is 86, and the delta is gonna grow to 100 if Peloton starts ripping. That means that for $90 less, the call buyer is going to have less risk and more exposure than the common stock trader. The only caveat to that is if someone's investment horizon is much longer than 18 months, um, and you know, they, they would just say, well, actually, I think that after January 2026, Peloton would still recover. So 
you know, ha. I think the, the people who know about dead money and capital allocation uh, wouldn't be thinking that way anyway. Whoa, let's just go look at Peloton. Now there's a lot of quant stuff to get out of my uh, system. Peloton. Let me show you guys a little bit of voodoo. voodoo. I think this is kind of interesting. I take this all time, th this low from March of 2020 uh, within the, this kind of sequence, and I connect it with this high. Let's say this is wave one, wave A. This is wave two, wave B. That's kind of ridiculous to be looking for wave three, wave C. It might be possible in a very, very long time frame. It's a moon boy target right now. Uh, but what's more important, it, it's completely unnecessary, is from this, this low, uh, plenty of upside. But just look at this, these time fibs. Wow. If I measure the beginning of wave one, wave A, look at where this low is made. Oh, man. Right at that five-month time fib. Right at that five-month time fib. Oh, man. So... Uh, they're buying all these options on Peloton. It's got earnings tomorrow. They're probably trying to force a gamma, a gamma, sque a gamma squeeze on some complacent retail bears. Uh, and, and honestly, you know, while earnings is one thing, if this stock gets going, does it, does it even make sense to say? Does it even make sense to say that earnings, just one earnings, is going to be the only catalyst? What was the other catalyst? It, we, it's just hard to say, hard not to say. All the, the lockdown stocks, all the biotech stocks, and uh, now even some of the crypto stocks are starting to send these 2020 messages. So um, that's just something to think about. I'm long co-diagnostics. My money's where uh, my mouth is, as always. And I look at this, I start to get the, the zoomies, if you know what I mean, 270 and 4.81 we can see this be a wave one from this low wave two The wave three target is 5.51. So a little bit more options analysis and to be honest, a little bit of fundamental analysis, not fundamental, but just based on what I'm seeing uh, from other of the, the CV19 stocks, the lockdown stocks. It's beginning to look a lot like 2020 if we lived in New Zealand and Australia. The length of wave one places the wave four low. Wave four retests the wave one high. It says within this five wave sequence, we can see Peloton go all the way up to 6.89, uh, taking a pit stop at 5.51 first. The quant in me says above 2.70. That's a nice invalidation, and that's a nice risk-reward. Let's see what happens with Peloton's earnings tomorrow morning. Let's see what happens to the lockdown sector after that. Going into the election, Big Bear AI. I give my followers Easter eggs. You got to look for some of them. You got to look for some of them. I, I posted in the comments, Soundhound. Uh, I you know, took a little bit of a, you know, hey, I perfectly talked about how Soundhound had topped right before the, the end of the first quarter. And then it looked like it was bottoming right before the end of the third quarter. And the institutions were buying uh, all those straddles and strangles on it. We saw Soundhound explode on news. And I said, don't miss my future post about why I think Big Bear AI and AI will follow sound as part of a thematic third quarter rally that Tesla uh, may also be leading. And now we even have uh, the NVIDIAs uh, coming back alive. You know, I can't believe the bears never came up. 
with NVIDIA. can't believe the, the person who predicted NVIDIA to the bull side of the best and also to the, the downside of the best is the one that came up with NVIDIA, man. I was just waiting, waiting to hear someone just, which is right there. It's right there. It was right there. Yeah, man. No one on Finchwick can write headlines. Some of that for uh, that wave four correction that I forecasted perfectly uh, for Nvidia after perfectly nailing uh, the wave three rally, the wave five rally, and then the the big wave four correction that ended after wave five, and then predicting the big wave five rally to begin after that, all perfectly. No one ever called it the Bulls being idiots. I was very upset. Wasted opportunity. Right there. Oh, well. So, yeah, some of that money maybe did exactly what I said flow out of NVIDIA uh, into the rest of the AI. And uh, a little bit of bots to BOTZ. Let's look at Big Bear AI. This low is 1.16, 1.165. This high is 4.795. And this low is 1.16. Good Lord, they made that way too close. Is that right? That can't be right. No, it is. What? 1.16 and 1.165. Hmm. Wave one, wave two, ABC correction, wave one, wave two, and then another wave one and another wave two. That wave three target above 1.165, 5.1. Or a shallow wave four and a wave five higher, a little more conservative target. We this high of four point seven nine five getting broken. The length of wave one. If wave four retests the wave one high and wave five is the length of wave one places the wave four low. You can see Big Bear AI go all the way up to eight. And that might just be ending the black wave three. Before a wave four and a wave five higher. We can even get a little more confirmation of that, taking the length of wave one in the larger degree. If wave four retests the wave one high, wave five is the length of wave one, places the wave four low. This sequence could be going all the way up to 12. Oh, that's a little far away to be forecasting, even with how hot I've been. 1.165. I'm talking about like a two year, three year hot streak. Someone said I was at 85%. On my hit rate, I think that's that's about what I've come up with too. 
85% on risk reward setups like this. I mean, come on now. Doesn't get better than that. Target. Oh man. Wave one, wave two on the larger degree. Wave one, ABC, wave two on the larger degree. Big wave three in progress. The length of wave one places the wave too low. Uh, it says target can be heading. Oh, look at look at how wave two on the smaller degree. I'll just delete this real quick. Look at how wave two on the smaller degree just perfectly wicks. Where if we had taken the length of this wave one, copied it, and we place it here, you're gonna see from time and time that that imaginary line, only the wave theorists are gonna have, keeps acting as useful supports for wave two, wave four, etc. But the wave three target is 325 in the long term. Let it go higher than that. One, two, three, four, five. The length of wave four, if wave four retests the wave one high, wave five is the length of wave one place the wave four low. Maybe one day that this black wave three could end in the upper 400s. And I mean the upper 400s, maybe. Let's look at this daily count before we go to the moon. Oh man, I had 133.08 as the invalidation. I was just trying to be a perfectionist. Oh man, we were right there at the 50% fib. The only really level to give was the 61.8% fib. I really think the more accurate level would have been this downside gap, but I thought that would have been too wide of 124.88. I love when these wave three gaps get retested because they're not gonna get filled. Oh man. But we did go clip that by a few pennies. If I ever say the if I ever say the 61.8% retracement is a invalidation for a wave two, reach through the computer, slap me in the face, or at least just know that I'm just giving the downside level. The 61.8% retracement never invalidates a wave two. If there was a big flaw with Elliott wave theory, I'll be honest, the biggest one is that the 78.6% retracement is pretty damn far from the 61.8% retracement, and they're both uh, useful levels. The other way I could have gotten a better stop, yeah, the 161.8% extension. What did it end up being? If my count wasn't perfect, it could be that was wave A. This was wave B. Yeah, it looks like that was the problem. That my wave A, my ABC was wrong. Yeah, but we did go to the 61.8% retracement. We nicked my, my stop and validation by less than a freaking dollar. Can't get them all perfect. But long term, it's still looking good. Still worth updating. 182.26 at the 61.8% fib for a blue chip. One hundred two point nine three and one eighty one point eight six. So I'm looking for wave three in progress. The length of wave one places the wave too low, takes it to 212.37. We're too far away for this breakaway level to be an invalidation. 132.42, I wish the original one had stuck. It didn't, but this is a really important chart to understand for this idea I've talked about with Starbucks too, that we are seeing the blue chips of the dividend sector. This isn't quite the dash for trash. This isn't your grandpa's dash for trash. We're seeing the bluest of the blue chips uh, still at multi-cycle lows. And I believe Target with Starbucks is a lot of confirmation uh, that this is happening, that there, there's still a lot of opportunity uh, for um, the, the best stock pickers in this world, uh, which you might happen to be following uh, for uh, the dividend growth superstars, and I mean the superstars, the stocks that we build our entire country around, uh, still being within very useful um, parts of their chart. 
132.42, a little wide of an invalidation. I don't think this gap is going to be filled, so let's use 142.88. Yeah, I don't think that gap gets filled. The length of wave one places the wave two low, gives the wave three target of 212.37. Before a shallow wave four and a wave five higher, if wave four retests the wave one high, wave five is the length of wave one, places the wave four low. Within the daily count sequence, but we can see target go up to the 260s, pay a dividend, probably a growing dividend along the way. Let's just gawk at these target fundamentals Real quick, 2.29% dividend. Uh, we've got price to sales, 0.62. I mean, come on. How many times in, in people's lives do they, they think they're going to see target at 0.62 uh, price to sales ratio? It is selling $107 billion in sales, and it has a $66 billion market cap. That's, that's kind of absurd. That means that this company sells more than it's worth by a factor of about 30 38% and this uh, this stock is not something that should be sneaking up on people. Interest coverage, 11.55, glorious. 7.51 return on assets, the institutional shareholders, 80%. They're accumulating the crap out of this. I don't even need to read the description. Growing dividend, beautiful dividend. That was gonna support it the whole way. 48% uh, payout ratio, gonna have to be compared with the rest of the sector. But a blue chip of the bluest chips, it was kind of like Starbucks where it just kind of made you wonder, is this really the end? Is this really the end? No, it wasn't. The institutions were loading it the whole time. The dividend growth superstars, uh, they're, they're, they're bottoming. And that, that's really the hardest part uh, is that it's, I was thinking about this recently. I was like half, half the best setups in this market are things that are named something like Salsa Coin or uh, Quantum, Quantum, Quantum Space Travel. And then the other half of the best setups in this market are the, the, the bluest of the blue chips, the backbones of our economy, and they're paying dividends. Really tough choice which one to pick, and I'm almost not being sarcastic there, but of course I am. Uh, dividends all day, and then growth gains to get more dividends uh, in the future. So we got Geo Group, uh, prison stock. I don't really support private prisons. This is really one of the only stocks where um, I've decided not to invest in it because of uh, personal political reasons. I believe that uh, profiting off of prison labor is uh, very unethical, and I think it's uh, probably the biggest thing that is wrong with this country. Uh, we need to uh, do something about that and, and understand. Uh, I know exactly what we need to do. We need to make sure that the exception uh, to slavery as punishment for a crime be removed from the 13th Amendment, so that's why I don't invest in Geo Group. I believe that I'm going to be potentially even running on that platform one day, and I don't want people to say, hey, he, he, uh, he was actually investing in these private prison stocks, but yes, government service providers for the United States, Australia, South Africa, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a prison, it's a prison stock. You know, not not something to, to sleep well over, but these 76% institutional shareholders, I mean, I invested in uh, Pfizer call options. I invested in co-diagnostics. I don't think either of those stocks are really, you know, ones that I'm going to be proud of. I don't think I help fund them in any way, so I don't want to guilt anyone. There's no church in the market, but, um, you know, I've avoided avoided supporting this stock on my page, but the unusual stock options volume that did not, the institutions, they don't have, they don't think about stuff like that. They don't care about the, the cigarette stocks or the ESGs or the vices. They don't care about any of that. It's all about the money and, you know, maybe that's the way it should be. Uh, we look at Geo Group. They were buying lots of options on this one. We're going to see 147% unusual options volume, 95% call bias, 0.76 price to sales, negative interest coverage ratio by slight. It looks like they're not going to have a problem refinancing, especially if we get rates a little lower. The market might be playing the rate cut in September, but what could they also be playing 
they could be playing the next administration. That's what's kind of scary. Two thousand, yeah, they didn't. They're not waiting till September. Two thousand five hundred seventy-one uh, in the money calls at the money calls. That's that's a little bit of that's a little bit of conviction uh, from these MMs because that could go splat pretty quick. And it, I don't think that's gonna be uh, a married short position where they're buying calls and then shorting shares of Geo uh, based on the equivalency because the the short borrowing fees. It wouldn't make sense. To do that let's look at geo's elliott wave So we have this clear one, ABC, wave two. But we got to figure out what the rest of this is. There's a few ways to look at it. I'll be completely honest. My preferred way to look at it is a little more conservative. That's why the purists, if the purists are like, hey, I don't think that's perfect. I'm kind of agreeing with you. I think that the more conservative way to look at this stock is that this is a wave one and a wave two. I think a pretty accurate way is that this is one, two, three, four, five, and then this is a wave one, and bulls are looking for a short wave two. I don't like that. The purists are going to say, just because it's too aggressive, the purists are going to say that that should be the right count uh, because we're breaking this wave one high. We're not really just destroying it. We did kind of wick there. And if we look at this, sequence this does fit the description of a wave three i believe and then the shorter correction makes a lot more sense uh, in the context of a wave four So I'm looking for something like this, wave one, wave two, large wave three in black in progress. It's subdivided into one, two, wave three, wave four. I'm looking for a wave five within a larger wave three. The minimum target is the length of wave one, place at the wave four low. Not bad right there of 19.0. Uh, Not as zesty as some of these growth setups that I've gone through. Uh, but it's important to understand one wave three target, one wave five target could be the length of wave three placed at the wave four low. That would kind of line up with the one, two, three, four, five, wave one, wave A, wave two, wave B, wave three, wave C view. I could see Geo in the low 20s. That's not too far away from 19.06. I wanted to update this just because they're buying so many calls on it and seems like a... I mean, I don't think earnings are, when are earnings? Yeah, earnings are out of the way. So they're taking unusual positions on this. It's, it's got to be because of the the political shakeups coming, or it could be the interest coverage. Uh, this company is going to get to refinance its debt. So if they uh, announce a, a rate cut, then the, the MMs are going to know that this company can, unfortunately, expand its its capacity even more. I mean, this is kind of the, the beast of the American system that a company like this is just in, encouraged to just grow and grow and grow for shareholder approval. Uh, we need to kind of figure out when we, we say enough is enough with this type of this type of stuff going on where a, a prison stock is being is being uh, encouraged to increase its market capitalization as much as possible. I think that incentive has to be removed. This video started talking about uh, incentives. That's an incentive that's got to be removed. We got to get rid of the incentive for private prisons. But I'm going to give you guys more and more incentive to keep giving me so many views on a weekday like you did yesterday. I hope you guys like this video. Uh, subscribe and enjoy your evening.